All right, we're now recording. I have no idea why it's. There we go. Now I can see what I'm doing. All right, so uh, I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do is run through just uh, how I paint a piece like this, and uh, if you and go through how I use acrylics and get started with it. So this is a, a little Christmas card piece I did the other day. Uh, seems I do one about every year at Christmas. So this is this year for 2020. It's got a little uh, kind of a, this is my little Charlie Brown dead Christmas tree uh, ode to 2020. So from there. So what I want to show you is how I use acrylics on this stuff. I have a basically, um, I'll show, see if I can move the camera around a little bit and show you some of the, there's the, oh, there's the lovely Joan in the background who's going to run everything for us. So that's the acrylics that I use. A little uh, Dale Rowney graduate acrylics, um, cadmium yellow and blue. They're basically the primary colors. Uh, the only color that's a variance from that is I do use, um, Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is my substitute for black. And it has a little bit of blue in it, it's gray, and it's really a great color for doing shading and pushing distance back. Uh, the big white one is a uh, titanium white. We'll use a lot of that, but almost all the colors you'll see on here get mixed uh, from the basic colors. So I start out with a little bit on the palette. I just use a small board uh, with some tin foil on it so I can wrap it up when I'm all done and throw it away or stick it somewhere where it doesn't uh, I can cover it but you know, that's where I mix that I mix with water there's basically four small brushes I use let me see there's a fan brush that we'll use when we're doing trees this brush is the workhorse does most of what I do and that's as small as I get on detail brushes for the most part on something like this when I'm uh, just putting uh, this piece has already got a coat of titanium white on it just to seal the wood. And when I do that, I use a dollar twenty Lowe's brush to just poke in and get the titanium white on there. So uh, I'm going to try to have this camera pretty close so you can see most of what we're doing from here. If I don't trip over it. Now I also have I have a little iPad that I keep around, and this is this is the. Uh, my reference photos here. And I kind of want to go with this sort of a nighttime scene with the blue snow and a, and a shiny moon and, and uh, kind of create that kind of color uh, on this painting. And then I have a couple pictures of caribou that I use as references, mostly for color references. But we'll be working mostly off this one to start with to get the basic colors in from there. So I got this down here out of sight. Um, so I'm going to go with my two-inch brush because I'm going to basically paint the whole thing that moonlit color. Uh, try to do some of my mixing up here where you guys can see it. And uh, so I'm just going to grab a little bit of, of the blue and this is going to run on me a bit. I got to be a bit careful. Get, kind of just mix that up like that. Even more of that going on and then I'll start dropping in the blues in the background. Now I paint on uh, almost, I paint the stuff that's furthest in the background first. So the sky and the background, and I don't worry about painting over everything because uh, you'll see when we come back through this, that I'm gonna paint these higher areas like this after I, get this all filled in. So there's just a lot of, this is why I use these beater brushes because you're just, there's nothing gentle about this. You just punch and paint into um, all the cracks. And if I get some up on the frame area, I'm not worried about that because I'm going to clean that up in the end with a sander. Uh, some of the guys I work with like to seal that part of it first so it cleans up easier. Um, that's not, you can see this is really, wet paint right now so it just goes on pretty easy and covers lightly if we were doing uh, one of the classes I want to do is something on washes where we just learn how to do um, 
paint washes on wood. So the, and in those cases, we won't put the titanium white base down. We'll just go right with washes and you can be able to see the grain uh, coming through, which is something that makes some very nice effects. when that's what you're after. Nothing really artistic. I I was uh, doing a, another class yesterday and I like to say that this kind of painting, unlike if you're painting on a flat canvas and you're doing say some elk or something like I was doing yesterday that you have to know the shape of the elk and you have to be able to draw and paint to get the shapes and stuff you want. This is why painting CNC carvings is to me is a lot more like working in a kid's coloring book because all the shapes are there. So the primary thing you're doing is just like a kid's coloring book is you're filling in the, filling in the different areas that need filled in. Of course, if you've ever been at a Denny's restaurant with your grandchildren and and you're watching them try to fill in a, one of the little coloring pages with a crayon, it does take a certain amount of skill to do that. So. I'm gonna just flip this over because it's easier to make sure I'm getting down in the cracks from this angle on these deep cuts around the letters. just plain takes a little bit of time to do this and it's part of the reason I did the got the white base coat on before, before I invited you guys to join just so you didn't have to sit through that but this is about the same process that would occur so acrylics is these the wood just absorbs it just sucks up paint this would be a little better off to the side just for right now while I'm doing this. So part of the reason that I put the base coat on there is a little like putting a coat of gesso on a canvas. It's to get the canvas set so that um, you're not too set up, too, too worried about getting uh, about the paint migrating on the canvas and you know it does it in the wood as well it tends to um, get pulled down into the wood and it just gets sucked up and it migrates around and you don't want that so the first coat kind of solves part of that problem by turning this upside down I can find places that like on the bottoms of these cuts here where the, the bottoms of these letters where I didn't get some of the paint down in there. The other thing about painting on wood is that as versus the canvas is that is that the wood does pull the paint down in so the paint dries quicker um, on this wood or it appears to dry it because it gets down into that this real rich dark sky we saw in that one of the beauties of if we were doing a sunset or something one of the beauties of acrylics is you have some time 
where you can blend colors while the paint's still wet. But if it's too, if once it's drying pretty fast, the ability to blend starts to go away. So, so we got a line of trees there that's going to kind of define our skyline is right in this area here. Good enough. That'll get us started on that. So we'll turn this beast back over. So we have a pretty nice rich color up top. I'm gonna pull up my one inch brush and clean some of that up a little bit. This paint is still, you can still blend it and you can see that going on. So this is one of the other tools I use when I'm, when I want the pet paint to sit and not blend anymore, which I'm going to want in just a minute. I'm going to put a little bit more on here for just a second. I'm looking at my, um, my picture over here on the side that I want to match in. Uh, there's some really, real dark, I'm going to use a little bit of paint to gray to darken this up a bit more so I can have a nice, deep, rich, dark value up in that top, top part of this. And I want to be able to go back and put the moon back in here in just a second. But I can't do that with wet paint, so that's why we use a hair dryer. So I'm going to And this just sets the acrylic. Most of this is already, you can see down here, that's almost dry. I'm taking up some of it on my fingers. But up here where the paint's heavier, it's going to take a little bit longer to dry. just a minute or so with a hair dryer to get that sort of blotched in there and, and uh, dry. So now, now if I go up in here, try to blend something, the paint won't blend and I can actually, if I want to put, uh, you know, where are we going to put the moon up here? I think I'm going to put the moon right up in this area here. And what I may do when I go back and after I'm done with it, I really like it having a moon up there. I'll probably go back and put a moon in the CNC model so that there's one there. I'm pondering putting a tree behind this snowman too to make him pop out more, but I, I thought I decided against doing that because I want to show you guys how to make him sort of pop just standing against the against the snow in the background. See if we can pull that off. But if it doesn't work, he's going to get the a tree behind him pretty fast and lickety split. So the next thing I'm going to kind of get in here is the skyline so we can see it. And if you look at, if you look at this sample I have here, you know, just for like what's going on up here on the edges of this house and stuff where there's some highlighted. Now the moon is actually hitting the snow and where the moon doesn't hit it, it's darker, but, uh, up where the sun actually shines on it, like the face of that house, it kind of makes it quite a bit lighter and almost white. So we're going to try to pick up um, somewhere where the skyline is up here. Not too much color and I don't want to get too I want to leave some shadows and stuff in there. Then I'm going to pull out uh, this brush, which is called a fan brush. And I'm going to just take some titanium white. 
I'm going to load up this brush and a bit of a water problem here on this. I got this tent so it doesn't drip. Uh, I'm just going to load up the brush a little bit with titanium white with just a touch of that blue in it that you can see there. And I'm going to just get these trees to work really quick. So I just want the side of the tree that I'm going to take that off for a second. Show something a little bit different. I'm going to take first thing I'm going to do is take my Payne's gray, kind of getting ahead of myself here, and we'll get the trees. We're just darkening the trees a bit where they are. You can see they cover part of the moon. And the carving helps you a bit here because you can see where the raised areas are, but I'm not, again, I'm not in there trying to uh, get the camera in really close on this while I, while I work on the trees. I'm not trying to paint out every little bit of blue on those trees. I'm trying to use the, just to get some of that covered leaving bits and pieces of the blue sitting there underneath the black. Payne's gray. And we might even go over here and get a bit and maybe we'll put a tree up here where we don't have one. Right now we'll just put a tree right here. Now we've got a little tree right there, but so once we have the basic dark part of the tree covered, I'm going to take some, go back to my blue and white, and I'm going to put on this side a little bit of snow on the branches. Just like that. There's no there's no brush strokes going on here. It's just dabbing, dabbing some blue and the blue with a bit of titanium white in it. Most mostly titanium white. And we'll do it on the off side of the trees away from the moon. Same over here our little tree. And then I'm going to just take some pure titanium white without any blue in it. And I'm going to touch the side of the tree that's facing the moon that's closer to it. Hopefully you can see in that it's picking up moonlight. Wouldn't be as much down here. And we're getting so this is, this is kind of true of when you're doing mountains or trees or an animal or anything, there's a side of it that's towards the source of light. It is going to have a different look than the side that's, there's going to be some really bright snow there. So got the trees down, ready to do trees, piece of cake. Yeah, so we'll back up a little bit. <laughs> Who's the cameraman on this job? Okay, so we're starting to see some light on the snow. I'm going to do the same thing up here. We'll get some snow drifts up here that are picking up moonlight. And then mostly I'm going to get the tops of these letters. where they're having some, they're picking up some moonlight as well. There's snow drifts on top of the letters and I wanna get that. Um, so here's the story with the letters. The letters are gonna eventually be bright red. So I'm gonna go back in here now. I wasn't worried about it before, but now I'm gonna go back and get some titanium white on them so that when I come back in, in 10 minutes with red, that titanium white will be dry and I won't end up with purple because I put red on top of blue, it comes out purple. And 
and we want that to show up pretty good. That's going to happen down here too, but I'm not uh, I'm not quite there yet. So same with my with my little reindeer here. He's going to get some brown and stuff on him. I want the blue to go away, but that's coming in a few minutes. So let's work on getting the snow in the background kind of worked in here right now. So hopefully you can see how the moons hit some of those trees, and we want some of the same stuff going on here. So down in the so there would be let's say there's some shadows down in here that are darker some of this i'm doing i consciously know that i want something to be dark near that snowman so when i carl his whole face is going to have a lot of titanium white on it because he's looking right almost right into the moon right this moon up is shining right down into his face so we want some pretty dark snow there. Here's some shadows coming off those trees. And then we'll put some, have a couple other places where the, snow is catching some of the moon reflection like that. So this is all stuff you can come back and play with. Play with a little bit later when you get, um, kind of get a sense of how the main, I mean, the main elements are the, uh, this, are the, the reindeer and the snowman and the lettering are the main elements that you really want to build everything else around. So we just have to leave some room to do that. So I was gonna, I was gonna paint this before I was gonna do a sample of it before I had you guys watch me do this in case I mess it up. But so you get to watch this all happen with all the mess ups on it as we go. I'm gonna get the bottom part of the snow drift down here is a little darker. We'll put that in first before I get too carried away with the letters. Because again, underneath, you know, the part that's hidden from the from the moon is going to be have a little bit more blue in it. And there's some of it down here as well. And you can see this. I've got paint running down onto the wooden frame. Well, when I get all done with this, I'll take it back up to the shop, and some of that will just get sanded off is just, and some guys are really good at masking off sections of stuff or they maybe you might have varnished that bottom part of it so that paint won't stick to it or comes off easier and everybody has their own processes for that. I just, I spend so much time cleaning up paint. I don't worry about it anymore. I just go ahead and paint and, and we'll deal with uh, the consequences later and clean it up. It's just quicker to take a Dremel and clean some of that up than it is to spend time trying to, for me to try to tape around complicated shapes and stuff. So, and this 2020 plant pot's gonna be a, not gonna be blue as well. Neither does what color, what color should we do the Christmas ornament, John? That can be bright red or something. And that carrot's gonna be bright orange. So there's when I'm when I teach uh, wood burning classes and a, and a lot of what goes on in wood burning you really only have one color you're burning burning wood black so when we and so doing wood burning is a whole lot of working in values what's really light and what's really dark so when you're wood burning you burn your darkest areas first and then 
to see just how how incredibly dark you can get it. When I'm working with a lot of different people, some people just won't hold the wood burner down there long enough, so their real dark values aren't as strong as someone else's dark values. So this is going to become an issue on the snowman, is what our range of values are from very light colored to very dark colored snow. There's only so much range, so we're going to cheat and create some shadows and stuff on there to try to get that to show up a little bit better. So this is uh, going to be a little study in how to go back to sixth grade art class. Most of us had to paint a ball and you did it by figuring out what the dark shadows were on the bottom of it. So we're going to, we're going to work on, I'm going to move the I'm going to move the camera in on the snowman again so you can kind of watch what we're doing here. I'll get a little bit off to the side. Excuse me for wiggling. It's stabilized here. There we go. So I'm going to use some Payne's Gray and I'm going to start finding the dark shadow bottom. It would be in it. You can see he has a scarf here. I'm not too worried about the scarf. We'll come discover that again later with some paint, but for right now, I want. So everything that's opposite and away from, from the moon, I'm gonna make darker. And I'm gonna put a really dark edge. down here. And same with his hat, it's gonna be the same way. Of course, his hat's gonna be kind of a, his hat's gonna be, gonna have some, his hat's gonna be brown. some really dark stuff on the back of that. So one of the advantages of relief carvings, which is really what CNC carvings is, or shallow relief carvings, is they create shadows. And in this particular, if you hold them up under light, and if you put the light over where the moon was, it would cast shadows for you. And it'd give you some idea where shadows should go. So this is a, this part of, of doing this is it, it, this takes some practice because you're going to be learning to blend. Now, the hardest part about wood burning, and I think the trickier part here, is these mid-range colors and how they, how the, how you blend them in with, because you look at a round thing, it doesn't necessarily have abrupt lines, like you can see a pretty abrupt line over here right now in that area. Can you hear the dog snoring in the background? <laughs> we have a very most <laughs> we have a wonderful little Yorkie named Diesel, and <laughs> he's a king of sleeping. <laughs> it's time. All right, so we'll try to get. This is all titanium white right here.
and I'm using the I'm using the side of the brush, not a different a different technique, but I'm just it's reasonably wet paint, so it'll drag and blend. <laughs> There's one happy dog over there right now. He's got some serious snores going on. So you can see it takes, this is why it's probably good to have some more off, some contrast here over in this area of the background. We just added a bit in right here. And smeared some paint there. So that is sort of the, Now I went back in here again. So you'll notice that if you pull a brush, if I pull it this way, it takes white paint out into the middle of the piece. But if I pull it back, it brings blue paint back with it. So there does take a little bit of patience to you know, learn strokes. And can they go both directions or? And I'm gonna get this collar with some white paint on it so we can get it to his pretty little scarf to pop when it comes time to do that. Same with the lantern over there. What do we wanna do with the lantern? We'll play with some uh, buttons and knobs here for just a minute. So, you know. it does help you know, some of this. I, <laughs> paintings go through what I call the ugly phase, whereas you can't really see, it doesn't all seem to work. And then, then certain parts of it start to bring it together as you get, starts to define what's going on. We'll paint the, One is, see, he's pulled his nose out of his head to feed the caribou, reindeer, reindeer. So we got to make that look like it's a. And same for the so there's the snowman starting to look a little bit more like a snowman and uh And that white paint. Let's go ahead and use the
All right. So let's use a little, now you can see if this, what you're gonna see happen here is if that paint's not dry, this bright, pretty red is also all of a sudden gonna turn pink, or if it hits blue paint, it's not dry, it's all of a sudden gonna hit purple. So, but I have, and even where I don't have uh, enough titanium white, I kind of like having, leaving a little bit of blue on there because it creates some shadows. There I hit some white paint. You can see what happens, it starts to turn all pink. What's nice about painting carvings, and when I design these carvings, I try to make the areas raised enough that, because I know I'm gonna be doing this, I want to be able to just have an abrupt enough edge on it that, that I can uh, not be too worried about getting paint down on the snowy parts because the model has been designed with enough of a raised and if you do I just painted some red on that arm and stuff all that it's pretty easy to come back and clean it up a little bit later so So let's let's uh, let's let the snowman kind of sit for a few minutes so we can play with the reindeer because I see him. I gave myself about an hour and fifteen minutes to do this. So we'll try to we're going to rough in the reindeer really quick. There's to remind you, there's my kind of color set on the rainbow or on the caribou reindeer. So we're back to the same principle here. We're painting everything in the background first, which is the caribou, and we're not worrying about the harnesses. And the we'll come back later and clean up. Uh, the harnesses here in a minute. a little bit of Payne's Gray again. And I think if you play around, with, if you can find Payne's Gray in your, I get it at Michael's, um, they have it there. But at any one of the art supply stores, if you play around with Payne's Gray, it's just makes such a big difference over use. So like black is such an all or nothing color. And Payne's Gray is meant to blend in with these other colors. And again, with the, with the raised antlers, and you noticed that I've painted the back side of the antlers, I'm not trying to paint around the edges of these antlers. I want, uh, if you look at this painting from the side, I want the sides of the antlers to be blue. So it just looks like it creates, helps with the illusion of, in a perfect world, if you were carving this as fully in the round, I would carve in behind these antlers and have them lifted away from the background. And then you'd paint all the way around the antler. But given that the we're not doing that in CNC carvings, it's just a very much a, a look at the from the front, I leave the back side of the antlers painted with painted the color, whatever the background is. So yesterday I was doing an elk and then it was a, against a green background. And so let's let the we'll let the moon hit some of those a little bit as well as it would. So just on the left side of the antlers, we'll have a little bit of moonlight hitting in there. 
I'm going to be doing the same thing on this carrot reindeer. There'd be some, definitely some moonlight hitting there. His whole collar area is white right up into his face and partly back into his And his legs are much darker than the, they have. And the belly's got a little bit of dark color to it. That in there. some color around my face and the nose a bit. So whenever I change colors like this, I rinse the brush off as much as I can and I clean it. And I'm just basically using the same brush over and over again for most of this. But you do have to take the time off to clean up the brush a bit and get it. Oreo. Everything starts to be the color of mud pretty quick. And if so, we'll put some titanium white back on these raised areas that are going to be the harnesses and stuff here. I'm going to go ahead and get some of that back in now that I have most of the caribou's general colors in. He's a reindeer, isn't he, Joan? We have an art gallery down in Willow here. You guys, this is live from Willow, Alaska. So we're about 70 miles north of Anchorage. And uh, we're on the Parks Highway going up to the Denali National Park. And we got an art gallery with about 70 artists in it. But one of them is a, we have a trapper from Fairbanks, a wholesale trapper. And he brings in a bunch of caribou hides for us every year. And that's probably the one of them. One of the things we sell more of all the time is caribou hives. I don't know if people want to take a piece of Santa's rain gear home with them or something. So, all right, so tiny brush. So I'm letting that dry for a minute while we get ready to play with letters. These letters I want to all be bright red. And I could have, I was telling you guys, we could have been very, very, careful and painted around all this stuff. And some of you, that's the style of painting you're gonna have and you're gonna do it that way and good for you. Um, this just happens to be how I do it. Feel free to steal anything you like and make it your own. Tell other people you made it up. Joan will tell you that I'm kind of messy anyway, so. Fortunately, I have her muted right now. <laughs> Don't 
don't even <laughs> she'll unmute herself and then I'll get out loud. <laughs> I just love the fact that when you're painting, there's our little Charlie Brown Christmas tree. When you're painting carvings like this, you just can kind of just hit the high spots. Let's see if we can make some orange really quick for that. There's a little carrot action going on. And I'm going to take the blow dryer out quick and touch up my leather. has a little bit of blue and white in it so I'm going to clean it up. But sometimes you have to change out the water in the middle of doing all this because the water starts to take on a color of its own and if that's the case you got to just go stop what you're doing and get clean water and this is the part where I can't talk and chew gum at the same time. As it does, but I ho hopefully you can see that. I don't know if I can get the camera in too much closer, but I'm just using the side of the brush and drawing it over the letters, pulling it across. You know, it's like this, just pulling it. Load up, load up the side of the brush with some red paint, and then just pull it across the letter. So when I want, started painting like this, I learned from a guy named Bill Cross here in Anchorage. And Bill was, I found, I was looking for someone to teach me acrylics because I didn't really want to learn oils. I wanted to be able to paint wood. because I've been a wood carver a long time. And then I ran into Bill Cross who was teaching classes and Bill was a marvelous instructor and trainer and Bill, Bill was, uh, part of his claim to fame was that he's the guy that taught Bob Ross how to paint. And Bob Ross was a sergeant in the Air Force in Fairbanks, up at Isleson Air Force Base. If you look up his history, hard to picture him as a, as a sergeant in anything, but he was and retired to go make his, like go with the world and ended up painting. A really interesting story but I had the chance to paint with Bill for go to his house and learn to paint <laughs> and, and drink wine. Uh, Bill was pretty big about serving wine while we painted. But he was a character, very skilled. Just, it, was, it was an ordeal to get him to show us stuff. He'd get telling stories and he goes, well, Bill, Bill, show us how you did water. <laughs> He'd be off telling stories for the longest time, especially if there was pretty girls in the class, and it was just about a waste of time. He was a fine fellow. So this is the same whenever I'm doing letters. This uh, 
raised letters. This is the same way I, and I have, a, you can see probably a couple little errors where I went off the letter and places I didn't want to go and I'll come back and that's when I spend my time touching it up. All right, let's look here for a minute. All right, so we're kind of, we're getting to where that's looking like something here. Yeah. You can see a couple things I want to take. So I go and put Let's do it a touch of cadmium yellow up in that moon to get it to pop a bit better. And Oh, there's some wet paint there still. So the harnesses, I have a lot of detail carved into the harnesses, so I'm going to just basically get red on them and come back and get them dry and then I'll see if I can detail in. Bill always called the, the littlest brush he had in his thing. He didn't use a lot of small brushes, but he did use some and he called it, I always said that was the money brushes, you yeah. see so we're uh we're about 85 percent done on this i would spend time cleaning up lots of little details and some of the some of the things around his face um it's interesting that you know there's like around the eyes the carving kind of helps you a little bit because it it provides some shadows and stuff that And just uh, some of the work we're doing is just to help the shadows show up a bit better. And I was going to go in and I'm going to detail some stuff around the harnesses. Um, So I put some raised areas in the model there so you can come back in reasonably area easily and but it's best to do it when the paint's dry. So we'll dry that out a little bit, take another shot at the harnesses in a few minutes. But that's the basics of uh, painting a Christmas card right there. So any questions that I can answer while you're on here, we're going to probably wrap it up and then I'll go back through this and detail it out and soften some edges. I'll probably putz on it. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, some of these areas down here, I'm just going to soften some of these edges where it's a little bit too, too abrupt in the transition from areas and play with some of that. And, but I'd encourage you to go get uh, go get messy and put some paint on some stuff. You know, a lot of guys do CNC carvings and they're afraid to paint them, but I think uh, you just gotta go try it, and see what comes of it. Yes.
shouldn't remember. It's like, I, it's a little bit like your granddaughters at the Denny's painting those coloring books. So you just got to go do it and have fun. And you can always carve more stuff. So. All right, Joan, I think we're done. If there's no questions, there's nothing in the chat, then I think we'll, uh, we'll call this one uh, done. All right, thanks for joining us.